everybody gather around Jeremy's here again for another unboxing video we have some stuff to go over it is the holiday season I hope everybody enjoyed Thanksgiving had your turkey I had my ham turkey's kind of overrated like the ham a little bit more that's just me but with the holiday season that means new toys are hitting the shelves they're just trying to fill it up you know it's that magical time of year I remember you know I remember when I was a kid it was like Oh my gosh, it's the holiday season because they're putting the little risers, you know, at Meyer, like in the toy aisle. I'm sorry, I say Meyer. If you're not in the Midwest, you don't know what Meyer is. It's basically another Walmart. But they put the extra shelf on top to put more toys up there because there's just so much stuff coming in, which means new stuff for me to review. I'm just rambling on right now. I want to get to the stuff that we have here. I've already gone over some of the legacy uh, figures. The new wave of figures, there was the first wave that was the three Ninja Storm, Core Rangers, and then Jason and Tommy. Now we're on to wave two. We're filling out more teams. We have moved, yes, we are still on MMPR. We have Zach, we have Billy, and we have our first female figure uh, from the MMPR side of things, Kimberly. Um, let me, I'll just show you quickly on the back of the box, as you can see, Wave 2 is those three figures from MMPR, and it is both uh, yellow and red, Andros and Ashley, from In Space. Basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to give you a little taste of a couple of different waves at the same time. So you can't really, it can't really just be one series and another series, it's just trying to get you, you know, give you a little bit of a variety, a little bit of a taste. Because I know the next wave is going to feature Trini and Tommy and his White Ranger outfit to complete the MMPR side and then it's going to also feature pink, blue, black but from in space and then we're going to move on and include some Zeo stuff and whatever in the future blah 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 but this is what we're doing right now we're going to finish some more of the Megazord as well according to the back of the box this should give us the entire Megazord minus Trini Sabretooth Tiger leg so that's pretty cool that's pretty good I'm going to set Kimberly aside for now I'm going to set Billy aside for now, and we are going to check out Zack first. Again, these boxes, they're very cool. Um, they kind of have that feel to me of the reissues of the VHS tapes, where there would be like one Ranger featured on the cover and have a couple episodes on the tape. Maybe I'm showing my age with that, but very similar um, feel to me. So we are going to crack open Zack here. Hip hop keto, it is the hip way to be with some Zach. La da, la dee. Um, if you haven't checked out my other videos, please go back and look at them. The review um, give, gives you a little bit of a better look of the box itself. Pretty standard fare. All the boxes are pretty much the same. Um, same image on the back that I showed you. This is what we have inside. You know what, I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to start by taking the arm. Um, this part's a little, is detachable actually. Um, let's see. Stay in there. Mm -hmm. Didn't think this part would take as long as it does. Okay, arms stayed in there, secure. This is the core part of the Megazord that we got with the Jason figure. Uh, the Tommy figure didn't come with uh, any part of the Zord. It just had weapons, just like his other one will. And I believe in general, they're trying to limit the Megazord parts it's, themselves to the core group of figures. And they're just gonna save like some a couple a weapon or whatever for Sixth Rangers. So boom. Zack has made his contribution to the Megazord. Uh, the one thing I said before that I will echo again is one of the disappointments that I have with this line in general is the lack of weapons. I understand this isn't figure arts or what have you, but you're, you're promoting these as like your big high-end figures. So I'm just saying that if it was me, I would give the Rangers their classic weapons. I'm not saying you have to give them like the Thunder Slingers or anything like that, but to just have the Blade Blasters 
and to only have them in one mode, you know, the sidearm mode, feels a little bit lax to me. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Um, I can't speak for everybody out there, but that's just sort of the idea that I've been getting um, in that department is that, you know, come on, you're, you're, you're trying to go all out for these figures. Let's truly, let's truly, um, you know, give us everything. Give us, give us little bells and whistles that I think are actually kind of standard things. Um, okay. Uh, same stuff I said in my review last time. I don't understand the little cuffs. You see there's a little bit of an indent here, a cuff indent. I think the thing there is that that is gold for Tommy and they kind of just use universal limbs in that respect, which is off. Because, you know, some figures, some lines, they have cuff designs, some don't. Like this and like in space. There's just no cuffs, it's just completely white or there's no little fringe. And so to, to add that on there and to use universal limbs comes off a tad bit lazy. Um, but the actual figure itself is very well designed. I don't know if I mentioned this before. Hold on one quick second. Talk amongst yourselves while I get up and I go look at something on my shelf because that's just how I am. Um, huh. Okay, this is definitely a new development. Um, I'll actually grab, grab, J grab Jason so I can articulate this to you guys. Because this is something very strange that I wasn't actually expecting. Zach's belt is kind of a shiny metallic silver. Do you see that? It's a shiny metallic silver. Jason's is not. And if you look at the morphers, Jason's morpher has the little black lines on the side and Zach's does not. So there's some, there's literally inconsistency from one figure to the next. And to me, that's, that's just, a, that's a bad thing because you're trying to collect a whole team. And yes, the, the power coins are accurate, which is fine. But what's the point of trying to collect a whole team if they're not consistent across the line? Like the paint applications from wave one should be the same as wave two. Like that's just basic common sense. So I'm definitely disappointed in that respect, but like the actual figure itself is very good, well built, tons of articulation, but the devil is in the details to me. I probably said that before. So to not have the details be universal across the entire line um, and only in waves, that, that's, that's uh, poor planning, I would say. That's the nicest way I can put it, poor planning. So I'm gonna put Zach over here and we're gonna check out Billy. Um, before I open it, yes, Billy um, and Kimberly, same thing. Silver belts, the black apps on the side are not there, like they are in Jason. So it's an entire wave thing. Maybe they're gonna re-release them. Maybe something. And and I mean, I bought, I actually bought um, Kimberly and the in space figures that I'm gonna review in another video. Uh, I bought those last night at Walmart, and then I bought Zach and Billy this morning at Target. So, you know, I mean, I got them from different boxes, so you're not going to make that... That's just how this wave is, apparently, unless they have... Unless, you know, they sell out and they release more. That's just kind of how it is. Very odd. Billy appropriately comes with his Triceratops leg. For the Megazord, very nice. We will pop that over here. Wait. This is Triceratops is on this side, right? How do I not even remember that basic Power Rangers stuff? Hold on. Hold on. I do more journeys. I walk around during videos. I don't do jump cuts. Jump cuts are okay, yeah. Triceratops is the left leg. And yet. Hold on. Oh, I was just spun around. That's what it is. This was spun around. 
in the packaging. It's fine. It's fine. It's just a brain fart on my on my cord right there. So there. The left side of the Megazord is complete. Stand for us. Look at that. The fiercest Megazord in all the land. Let's see how long that'll stay up. Oh. Why do they do that sometimes? There's like, literally Billy's leg is in a little plastic thing. A little tie. Nothing else is, but just his one leg. Alright, let's see how prodigious and more phenomenal Billy is. Gotta put his little blade blaster on the side like so. And that's the thing is it's hard to say a lot of different things from one figure to the other. If it's something I like in one, it's going to be something I like in the next one. If it's something wrong, it's probably going to be wrong in the next one as well. Same stuff here, same articulation. I mean, all these figures are basically the same mold. The only, there's just a male mold and a female mold. And then obviously their, their colors and then the helmets. And honestly, the helmets are really nicely done. Like the colors on them are fantastic, um, very consistent. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're bang on in that respect. I love what they do with the helmet work. And the actual details in the Morpher are good because I can see the Triceratops coin. I can actually see it. Like, I can, I can identify that from the others. But again, I don't like the cuff line being there. I don't like the inconsistency across the waves. I don't like the lack of paints on the side and the silvernish. It's just, it's just a very strange thing. I don't understand why they would do that. Like, you're trying to market these as like a cheaper alternative to figure arts, which I understand, because you, you're probably thinking, well, fans keep importing all these stuff from Japan. We're not getting the money from it. So we need to do our own unique line, which is fair. It makes a lot of sense. I'm totally down with that. But if you're going to tell fans, you know what, stop buying figure arts and start buying our stuff, then you have to give them something that is at least equitable in a lot of ways. And when you miss basic things like that with the paint, like you are, you are not making the greatest case in the world. You're making a fine case for the fans who are on the fence and are just don't have as much money and would like something collectible, that's fine. But if you're trying to get the hardcore collectors, you're not doing your due diligence. You just aren't. I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to be that blunt, but it's true, you know? I'm a, I'm a hardcore collector, and I know a lot of hardcore collectors out there, and these little details mean a lot to them. So, I'm being honest, Bandai. Anyway... Time for Kimberly, our first female sculpt, as I said, of the MMPR line. Put the little blade blaster in. Get our Megazord arm out. And is this going to be difficult for me again? Are you going to cause me? Great consternation making this the, the shoulder piece stick on. Okay, there we go. And again, like, see, the, the back's not painted, but the front is. That's fine. That's not a huge deal. Um, it is what it is. And snap. So there we have it. This is the majority of the Mechazord. We're just one leg away from being able to put him on the shelf with the rest of the team. He can still do his sweet, oh, still do his sweet pogo stance. Look at that. He's got a gangsta lean going on. That is the Megazord that we all know and love. Sort of. And finally, Kimberly herself. Come on out, girl. Join us. Boom. And snap on the side. Pose. 
la di la da Barbie herself. Uh, differences. Obviously, it's a much thinner uh, sculpt. I feel like the waistline is a tad too thin, um, and the arms are a little, little tiny. I understand, you know, you're going for female, but something a little closer to realistic proportions would be better. Um, the helmet is great. She's always had that unique helmet with a lot of white on it. Very cool. The skirt is flexible. You can see it has little slits on the side to add a little flexibility to it to make it easier to move the legs around, which is nice. Works very well. It's a solid detail. I don't really know if her... Mm, I don't know. I mean, overall, it's a it's a good figure, and it's the same stuff I've already said. I, I don't want to keep harping on it, but you know what I'm talking about. The color, the belt color off, you know, uh, her belt. I can see the pterodactyl as well. I think the mastodon is the most easy to see of these three, but it's there. Again, you're talking for... These figures run about 20 bucks. Um, I've seen it, you know, 17, 18. I've seen 21, 22. Just depends where you're going. Um, what you're trying to get, um, you know, the, type, the store, you know, which stores are cheaper, you know, Walmart's always a cheaper store, stuff like that. You understand that. Anybody who's ever shopped understands that. So for the price, they're very, very good figures. I don't have tons of complaints about them. If you're looking for a complete team of figures that looks pretty cool, these are very serviceable. But if you are a neurotic, like OCD, crazy in your brain collector like me who saves all your boxes and who loves to display everything and make them look perfect yeah you're gonna notice these these inconsistencies with the belts you are it's just a thing the cuffs thing that I mentioned before I can get past that it's not the worst thing in the world you could pass it off as just extra like definition in the figures but the, the paint stuff you can't and again the lack of weapons is very disappointing I would have gladly paid $25 if they would have added weapons and made sure all the colors were fine. But that's how it is. Like, I would personally, I would rather have weapons and stuff like that than a build a figure. But I'm guessing that their whole concept was that they were supposed to be looking for some of the collectors, but also some of the casual fans. So casual fans probably would like something like a Megazord. And when you do that, you compel people to buy all of the figures. Because, you know, what are you like, I don't like Trini. And you're like, well, I'm, I just got a Megazord with no leg. You'd probably then buy Trini. Right? So, I get their mindset. I know what they're going for. Overall, I think they succeeded more than they failed with this line. But I also think there's definitely plenty of room for improvement. That's pretty much it. Anyway, this is my review of the MMPR figures. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have a review of the two space figures that were released in this wave. I think splitting them up, it makes more sense. That's what I did with the Ninja Storm figures as well. Um, all of those figures, all those reviews, I will I will have links for them. Um, hopefully I'll remember to add them. I'm not really good at that part of stuff with YouTube yet, but I'm trying, trying, I'm trying to get better with it. Try to remember to add it. But if not, please search my channel, find those reviews, watch them. Tell me what you think of these figures. As always, I am Jeremy, a.k.a. Captain Subpar. Please, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed before. Leave a comment if you have something you'd like to say. Um, or, you know, just share this video with anybody, your friends, your family, people you think like MMPR, might like some figure reviews, might want to see a 32-year-old weirdo give really complex uh, analysis of children's toys. I do that too. That's pretty much all I do. Um, but I will see you very soon with another exciting review. And as always, I am going to be King of the Geeks. I'm hopping on my one leg. Bloop. A bloop.